cataractcoach.com. Toric IOLs in Fuchs corneal dystrophy. Can Toric lenses work well in these cases? Well, what about doing the future DMEC? So you can see here on this patient, look carefully, extensive endothelial drop out of this patient. However, this patient is still maintaining a reasonable corneal central pachymetry of 570 microns. That's not too bad. Remember, our guidelines are, in general, if it's 600 microns or thinner in the cornea, they tend to do pretty well with just cataract surgery alone. If it's above 650, 640, they're probably going to need a combined cataract and DMEC. And if there's somewhere between those two, well, that's the gray zone, and you use your clinical judgment here. Now, you can see we have marks on the cornea for the steep axis. This patient has about two diopters of corneal astigmatism steep at that meridian, which looks like uh, a little shy of 180, maybe 170 degrees. So we'll do our phaco incision here. And now the key in this case is preserving the existing endothelial cell function. Now, depending on the age of the patient, you may be able to do a cataract surgery alone and never have to worry about a future DMEC. Now, this patient was on the younger side. Then perhaps, as you know, with time, there's further progression of the endothelial cell dropout, and maybe the patient will need a future DMEC. Now, the DMEC procedures these days in the modern era these are very small incisions, let's say three millimeters or even smaller to make the incision for the DMEC. And that incision for the DMEC can be either sutureless or closed up with a single 10 o nylon suture. As a result, it's not going to induce a lot of astigmatism. This is gone are the days of doing a penetrating keratoplasty or full thickness transplant for a patient with Fuchs dystrophy. No need. You can just transplant that inner endothelial layer by doing a DMEC procedure. So there's the rectus here. Again, we're just gonna do a straight cataract surgery. Now the DMEC procedure may cause a little bit of a hyperopic shift, so we can take that into account for the lens calcs. Let's skip ahead to the end of the case here. You can see removing the cortex. Everything went beautiful with the nucleus removal. Again, we tried to minimize the phaco energy, use good dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea, stay away from the, the endothelium with the phaco probe, and the patient can have a very nice outcome here. So there you go, cleaned up caps or bag, and now time to put some viscoelastic in and polish up the bag. In doing these cases, you'd be best off if you want a plano outcome or emotropic outcome, aiming for just a pinch of post-op myopia. Maybe some routine of minus a quarter to minus a half. And that way the patient, when you have a future DMEC procedure, that little hyperopic shift will shift them towards perfect emotropia or plano as opposed to um, leaving them hyperopic. If you aim for perfect plano now and they need the DMEC, they may end up a little hyper. Here's the eye going in the capture bag, single piece monofocal acrylic lens that is, of course, toric. And certainly, I think it's a very good approach here to use a toric lens for this patient because there's two diopters of astigmatism that need to be corrected. So you can see there's the lens unfolding nicely, nice and easy. We'll get it in, right, in the right position. So I definitely like to use these toric IOLs in patients with Fuchs dystrophy if they have significant corneal astigmatism. There's no downside. Now, I'm not so sure about using other designs, so I'd be cautious about putting in a trifocal lens or putting in even an extended depth of focus lens because you're dealing with a compromised cornea, which may cause some degradation of image quality. And if you combine that with contrast loss from some of these IOL designs, that may further degrade image quality. So you want to be cautious. So I truly, I truly prefer a monofocal lens and toric designs are great if it's needed, go for it. And you can see here at the end of the case, getting that toric lens lined up precisely at the steep meridian. And now at the end of the case, definitely using some Triam Cinelone, preservative free, help quell the inflammation. The last thing I want in this eye is post-op inflammation. In addition, you want to leave the eye with a normal IOP, even on the lower side. Don't overexpand the eye and leave a high pressure. You want to get that pressure down a little bit, that's better. This patient will be very happy now. And yes, there may be a little bit of corneal edema in the initial post-op period, but give it a week or so, and the patient's cornea should clear up just nicely, and you can have a beautiful outcome like this. Now, we're double-checking the incisions here with that Wexel soaked in tetracaine. You know that trick, right? You don't. You better go to Cataract Coach and Google that. Look up tetracaine. Thanks for watching.